Well guys, here we are at the end of 2019, but right in the middle of shooting our end of the year roundups, a pretty interesting monitor hit the studio. Yeah, I know, gaming monitor tech isn't all that interesting these days because every company tries to implement high refresh rate panels while others like Razer tend to focus a little bit more on the exterior design to make it look more unique compared to the competition. Uh, meanwhile, picture quality has gradually improved as well because we can now see IPS panels hit higher refresh rate values, which is pretty awesome. So this is the Tough Gaming VG27AQ. Sure, it has a confusing name and it looks like every other gaming monitor out there, but it might actually be one of the most unique. That's because ASUS has added a technology that as far as I know, no one else has right now. It's called ELMB, or in other words, Extreme Low Motion Blur Synchronization. That was a mouthful, but let's check it out right after this. The Be Quiet Pure Base 500 is a perfectly sized, handsome mid tower with the usual silent properties on the front panel and foam on the interior, with two quality fans included, plus a modular top section to expand the cooling potential. Give you hardware in your home with the Pure Base 500. All right, so first up, this isn't a full monitor review. In fact, we're in the process of updating our testing methodologies for 2020 to step up our video game, uh, but. Um, ELMB Sync did help me try out a few new tests that I've been working on. So think of this as an overview of a cool technology where we can do some fun comparisons. So just to make your life a little bit easier, I'll leave some timestamps in the comments down below. So the holy grail of moving image quality is to completely reduce artifacts like ghosting, motion blur, tearing, and stutter. Every one of these factors could negatively affect your gaming experience, in some cases without even you knowing it. Over time, new technologies were able to address a lot of those issues in modern displays. For instance, if you take a look at FreeSync and G-Sync, they took care of things like tearing and stuttering, while ghosting was reduced but not eliminated by things like faster pixel response times. I won't go into detail about what it is or what causes it, but motion blur can be a positive and negative thing in games. Some titles use it as an intentional on-screen effect, but in many cases it's distracting to some people and it can even lead to eye strain. Monitor brands have found one of the best ways to eliminate motion blur, which is to strobe or turn off the backlight at a rapid at pace. This inserts black frames while the monitor waits for pixel transitions while the fully refreshed frames are displayed as usual. It's an interesting idea that has been named things like light boost, ULMB, and aim stabilizer. The problem is blur reduction can make micro stutters worse, so people tend to enable V-Sync when it's used. Well, that's a serious no-no for many gamers who want the best possible frame rates. Now at this point, a lot of you might be thinking to yourselves, well, if V-Sync is compatible, what about Adaptive Sync, FreeSync, and G-Sync to eliminate or reduce stuttering? Well, those couldn't be turned on alongside motion blur reduction until now. Yeah, I know, it's taken a while to get here, but that's where ELMB Sync and the ASUS Top Gaming VG27AQ comes into the table. Basically, what this monitor allows you to do is turn on both Adaptive Sync through FreeSync or G-Sync and it's motion blur reduction at the same time. That's a pretty big deal. Alongside that feature, the VG27AQ has a pretty straightforward design, and for gamers, it checks off almost every box. It has a 27 inch 2560 by 1440, 8-bit IPS screen that operates at 144 hertz normally, but it can be overclocked to 165 hertz by just one setting in the OSD. HDR10 is also supported, though I didn't really see much benefit of that during gaming. There's plenty of pivot, tilt, and height adjustments to the point where this whole monitor can be set up in portrait mode. Oh, and for all of you wondering, it also has a standard base and mounting support as well. Meanwhile, the I.O. is handled by two HDMI 2.0 connectors and a DisplayPort 1.2. And the price of all of this? Well, I've seen this monitor going anywhere between $400 to $450 US. So what I'm gonna do right now is cut to a little vlog portion of the behind the scenes setup of putting this monitor to the test. So what I have over here is my camera set up on the slider and then I have the monitor over here running the UFO test. Now, the shooting setting on my camera is at 720p at 120 frames per second. And then I made sure that the refresh rate on the display is at 120 hertz because I wanted to make sure that, that matches the frame rate so that we don't get those flickering. The goal here is to make sure that when you're shooting it, you're basically lining up with the UFOs in line. So right now, if I were to just, I'm not sure if I will be able to do this one-handed, but if you just pay close attention, you wanna make sure that it matches the same straight line as that UFO. So that's ideally what we're going for. Again, if you have a camera that shoots at a higher frame rate, this is definitely something that you could try 
out for yourself, provided that you have a slider. But um, this is certainly gonna take a couple of tries to uh, get it right. So now that you know the basics, let's take a look at what we were able to capture. But do keep in mind that in some cases, uh, my camera that I'm using to shoot this video wasn't able to sync up with the panel's refresh rate. So you might start to see moving horizontal lines. Let's get started. All right, so without ELMB sync turned on, motion blur is pretty evident in the moving UFOs and you can hardly see the little alien sitting inside. Even in a still shot, you can't clearly make out the blur. Now, enabling ELMB sync adds a lot of motion clarity in almost every way. Another thing that's obvious is a very, very faint double image in the front and back of the UFO. This looks like something called strobe crosstalk, which is normal for motion blur reduction, but in this case, it's very well controlled. It wasn't evident in any games, at least in my opinion. Moving on to a quick side-by-side -side comparison, the benefits are pretty evident, guys, but what these moving images can't show is how this all translates into games. The effect in games was pretty interesting, since moving around at high speed didn't really show much of a difference to the naked eye. But when you slow things down to 120 or even 240 frames per second, the benefits of this technology are pretty evident. When it comes to racing games, reducing motion blur can really come down to personal preference, but they also give a chance to show this tech in action. Any object that's moving by the camera can have a clearer look to it, but I have to wonder, is this really worth a while in this situation? Let me know in the comments. The real game changer is the addition of adaptive sync, since with just ELMB on, there were a ton of other artifacts. Meanwhile, turning on V-Sync introduced way too much input lag. But enabling G-Sync through DisplayPort Adaptive Sync eliminated most, but not all, of the micro stutter and tearing, while ELMB Sync took care of the motion blur. So now that you've seen a snapshot of the results, there are a few things that I want to bring up that are quite important. You do need a powerful GPU to take advantage of the VG27AQ's true capabilities, uh, since both Adaptive Sync and ELMB Sync can't be operated between 60 and 165 frames per second, because if the frame rates dip below that, you lose the benefits of both. Also, you can't turn on ASUS's trace-free panel overdrive when ELMB Sync is on, but at least the option is there in the OSD. Another thing you probably noticed is gameplay shots with ELMB Sync enabled were a bit darker than those without it. That's due to the strobing effect, basically inserting black frames between panel refreshes. Luckily, the effect isn't as drastic as I saw on monitors like the Razer Raptor, but it's still something to take into account. So that's a situation that I was able to record, but I'm gonna let Mike chime in for a bit because he's been using this monitor for over a week, playing a lot of games. So yeah, you know, he gets to play more games than I do, which is, which is, do you guys think that's fair? Like, I don't know, let me know. So here I am giving my opinion about a monitor again after using it for a little while. And let's talk about that use because I never even saw a difference when I first started using the monitor along with ELMB Sync and Adaptive Sync. I think the reason for that is my brain was still attuned to the blur that I was seeing on a standard monitor. But the real difference came when I ended up turning it off. And that sort of led me down a path saying, okay, look, this is the monitor that I'm going to be using going forward, at least until something better hits the office. And the reason for that is that I can't really go back to a monitor that either only has G-Sync or FreeSync or Adaptive Sync and can't enable something like ELMB Sync. So that's my really, really quick opinion about this. Like I said, this is probably going to be my main gaming monitor going forward. So there you guys have it. Let me know what you guys think about this cool tech called Extreme Low Motion Blur Synchronization. Quite a mouthful, but uh, yeah, I'm Ebro with Connects. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out some relevant content over here. Subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on a new video. I'm signing off and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.